What up, fish homies? Got a special one for you today. Well, actually, it's not that special, but it's a little different than what we normally do. There will be no fishing in this video, but it will help you with your fishing, especially with summer coming up. Anyways, long story short, I was fishing with Jared the other night and just kept catching catfish. I think I caught like three in a row, one like pretty decent sized one. Anyways, the freaking hook was dull as like a piece of sandpaper. It wouldn't even get the skin on my finger. So, I started thinking like, what rig could I use and just like change the hooks easily without having to retie a whole new rig or get another one out of the rig box. And I remembered about the multi-rig. This rig will save you not only a lot of time, but will end up saving you money because you're not gonna have to retie the same rig, use more putty, use more coated braid, use all this time, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna save you time and money in the long run, especially here in the United States where we can catch carp one after another, after another, after another, especially in the summer, or we're catching catfish left and right on boilies or whatever. So this rig will let you change out your hook really quick, probably in like two seconds, and then you'll have a fresh sharp one ready to toss back out there fishing. You won't have to change your rig or untie and tie up anything, and blah, 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 blah. So let's get started with the multi-rig. This is the example of the rig that was ruined by the catfish. You can see it's still a perfectly good rig, perfectly good German rig. That yellow stuff is just bait floss that I haven't cut off there. But yeah, it's still a perfectly good German rig. Got my anti-tangle sleeve, got a little shot, my coated braid, but the hook is just duller than ever. Can't even pick up the skin on my finger. Just drags right across. You can kind of see, I don't know how easy it is to see, but you can kind of see that the hook is just dull now too. But, and I also got this hook bead on there. So all this stuff is pretty much going to waste. I don't want to like cut it up and reuse it or whatever. I usually reuse the swivels and I'll probably maybe reuse the shot, I don't know, but you end up wasting a lot of stuff just because the hook is dull. So the first thing you want to do is get yourself some coated braid. This stuff isn't that expensive, and it seems like not a lot. It comes like up to here on there, but uh, it really it really lasts a lot. I've done like 20 rigs already probably, and still have this much left, so. I always just get out a nice little helping that's probably like 18 inches or something. But the more you practice tying rigs, the less line you'll end up using. So, sorry, my dog started going crazy for some reason. There's no one even at the door. So you get yourself a nice piece of coated braid. Like I said, this is probably like 18 inches. And first thing you're gonna wanna do is tie a loop. Recently I've been using the figure eight loop a lot. I'm not sure why, but it works pretty darn good. What you do is just, long story short, you double over the line and you get a little loop and then you make a little, another loop with that and you twist it And then you put your first loop through that. All right, so here's a better example. There's a little bit of my spit on it. But there's a little better example of the old uh, figure eight loop knot. All right, so there's a little better example of what the figure eight loop knot will look like. My camera's not focusing that good. But that's what it looks like when you're about to pull it tight right there. You get a little figure of eight. It's going in and out of focus. Sorry about that, but... So you wanna make this first loop a little bit bigger than normal, cause this is what's gonna go around the hook. Pull it tight. Then you're gonna to wanna to pinch the loop at the end of it, so you get a nice little fold at the tip. And you're gonna to wanna to put it through the eye of the hook where the, where the pointy side is. So on this side, you shove it through there Try and be careful not to poke yourself. It's pretty easy to get it through. So you can see here, we have the loop through the eye of the hook. All right, so the next thing you're gonna wanna grab is a little ring swivel like this, or just a, a little ring. Like, I think um, when people use the rings, they use ones that are a little bit bigger. I like the ring swivels. I think this one's a little bit small, but it will do for now. So. Once you get your hook on the loop, you throw on your ring or your ring swivel. 
see if I can make it so you guys can see it going on here. There we go. And then what you do is pull the loop over the hook and then you kind of form your D. So that's gonna give you a little D there with a ring swivel on it. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is tie a loop in the other side, which I've already done. Another figure of eight loop. I tied this one too small, so I just use this as the end of the rig where we'll put the swivel and attach it to our main line. So once you have your hook with your little D and your swivel on there, you're gonna want to pull back a little bit of the um, coating on the braid right below the knot. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I do it with my teeth, but there is tools meant for this. I just don't have one on me right now. So you can see we made a break in the coating. Now there's a little hinge where it can um, move back and forth. And this is going to be a little pop-up, so it's going to sit up like that. So without that hinge, it would be all stiff. But that helps it out there. The next thing you want to do is grab your putty. You can use a shot for this, like a little split shot. But this putty is a little more custom, so you can kind of like custom weight how your uh, bait sits on there. You want your bait to fall through the water like pretty slowly, like slowly sink down and rest right on top of whatever's down there. You don't want it to just plunge right into the bottom, so you don't want to over putty this rig. And you put the putty around the knot here. So I don't know if you can see that. Got the putty, gonna wrap it around the knot. Now you can really see the hinge right below where the shot is. It's got a nice little range of mo movement. So it's basically gonna sit in the water like this. So it's gonna be popped up off the bottom from where the shot or the putty is. Next thing you wanna do is grab your baiting needle and get yourself a little pop up here. These are 12 mil um, homemade uh, white chocolate strawberry boilies from the mainline range. So you get your boilie on your baiting needle, grab yourself some bait floss. All you do is get your little ring swivel there that's on your D. I like to grab both ends to pull it through. Just makes it nice and neat. You wrap your bait floss around your needle, slide on your boilie, so you slide down your boilie onto the, I like to put it onto the barrel of the swivel, still can twist around all perfectly, but it kind of stays on there a little better to me. So then you just trim off the excess, but leave some on there. Because what you want to do is burn down the rest of this with your lighter, your torch, whatever you have. And then blot the end there. Trust me, don't worry about the burning smell of carp, don't mind. I've used it plenty of times. So I'm just getting another little bit of putty to put around the, the middle here. Just to make sure the rig stays all pinned down on the floor. Alright, so basically this is how the rig is going to sit in the water. This will be attached to your weight. Here's a little putty to hold it down on the bottom. Then here's where your hinge is right here. So it's going to be sat up off the bottom right where this putty is. Hopefully you have your D and then you have your pop up and your hook. So I think we're going to drop this in one of the fish tanks and see what it looks like floating in there. All right, guys. So that's what it looks like sitting in my dirty, dirty fish tank. This is an old one that I don't use. I just haven't taken it down yet. But you can see how it sits on the bottom perfectly. I added another little boilie because uh, that little barrel shaped one. I added the white one on the bottom because the pink one by itself wasn't buoyant enough. So you want to make sure that these are balanced right before you throw it out there. And this, let's see if I can show you what I mean about how it needs to sink slowly. So when it hits the water... You want it to just slowly sink like that and settle on the bottom nice and easy. If it crashes through hard, like really fast, 
it might just go right into the grass or whatever that's on the bottom and not might not present itself but if it falls nice and slow like that it's going to be perfect so that's going to what it, that's what it's going to look like from the side perfect little view you can fish this over like a bed of boilies or you can put a little uh, PVA bag on there and fish it over a little bit of bait or whatever you want get creative with this but this is a multi-rig I'm going to show you why it's so convenient right now there's a little top view too so you can kind of get an idea what the fishes see when they swim up on it it's pretty much just a pink looking nice little morsel for them to eat and they swoop down and boom you can also see how the the hook sitting nice already so right when they suck that up it's in like a claw little formation and it's just gonna hook them quick you can also see below the first putty is where that little hinge is that's why it's sitting up so good I think the curve is a little aggressive for this style of rig but I think it will work just fine all right so let's say you've been fishing for hours you feel the hook and it's not sharp anymore well with this rig super conveniently you can just slide the D off here slide your bait off slide your hook off boom boom throw it away get a new one put the uh, eye or the loop back through the eye of the hook put your bait back on Pull the loop back over the hook, and there you go. The hook is changed up, probably less than a minute that took. Got a brand new hook on there, still got the bait on there. You can change the bait if you want, obviously, and you are ready to fish again with a brand new hook. Let me know how you like the multi-rig. Let me know if you have any suggestions for me on how to tie it different or anything, if I'm doing anything wrong. And let me know if you want to see more of these videos. Other than that, fish homies, peace out for now. Uh, I freaking don't have a net right now. That's why I'm doing this little rig video because I can't go fishing until like a day or two. But anyways, uh, yeah, let me know how you like this. Let me know if you want to see more. And once again, peace out fish homies. All right guys, one thing I think I forgot to mention, I already filmed this video, but I'm gonna put this in the beginning or something. Uh, so what you need for the hook is not like a curved shank hook. Like I said, I think that uh, curve is a little too aggressive, but I kind of made it work. You want a hook with an outturned eye on it. So like a chod hook or something. I'll pull up a picture on the computer and show you guys an example just in case you don't understand. So this is what I mean when I say outturned eye. You can see it's just a regular hook and then the eye points out and backwards. On those curved shanks hooks I was using, they're coming in like this and the eye is going to go this way. But on these chod hooks and other kinds of hooks, the eye goes out away from the shaft. So that's kind of the um, style of hook you want to use. So that's more of what it's going to look like with a little outturned eye, a little smaller D, and it's just going to sit better up in the water. Like I was saying, the curved shank hook will work, and I've seen people use it before. I think there's an example right here, and I think this is from Big Carp Tackle. So he's using a curved shank hook, and you can see the eye actually does turn in there, but you can see it has a super aggressive angle when it's sitting up and some people really like that but I like it more to be a little less aggressive I don't know why but yeah so like you can see here I think this is off big carp tackle this uh, curve shank hook is also okay to use and that's what I did in this video but like I was showing earlier it's ideal to use one with an outturned eye it's just a little easier and looks a little cleaner a lot of people have their own spin-off of these different rigs and I kind of do too because we can't order all these hooks and everything very easily. We have to get them from Big Carp Tackle, get them online and stuff. So I use what I have to work with a lot and that always isn't perfect, but I wanted to make you guys a video so that there's not no videos coming out, I guess. But uh, yeah, let me know how you like it 